Okay, now let's look at how to establish the OSPF adjacencies. So first of all, there are different network types. OSPF actually has four different network types, which is the broadcast, the MBMA, the P2MP, and P2P. So assume that this is the network. There are two routers connected with a link, and uh, we can use this command to, to see uh, how many types of network. So uh, you, 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 you give it network type uh, and followed by the question mark. Then you can see that there are four different network types. Now we will introduce the network types one by one. So the first of all is the point-to-point -point network type. That's easy to understand, right? So if two routers are connected with a cable directly, then we call it the point-to-point -point network type. So this network type means that only two network devices can be connected on the link. And a typical example is PPP link, right? Point-to-point -point link. And when an interface uses PPP encapsulation, the default network type of the OSPF interface actually is P2P. The next network type actually is the broadcast multiple access. When multiple routers are connected by a switch, we call it the broadcast multiple access. That means the packet can be broadcast to any of these routers because they are connected with switch and they are in the same subnet. So a typical example actually is the Ethernet network, right? When the interface uses Ethernet, the default network type is BMA, the broadcast multiple access. The third one is non-broadcast multiple access. Yeah, uh, here you are connected with a multiple access network, but that is not broadcast. So a typical network is the frame relay. If a router is connected with a frame relay, then that is MBMA. And the last one is point to multipoint. A point to multipoint network is formed by bundling the endpoints of multiple point to point links. So uh, if this one is a point to point, this one is a point to point. If we bundle these two links together, then it becomes point to multipoint. A, actually, uh, no link layer is considered as point to multipoint by default. Uh, this must be manually configured by the administrator. Okay, so that's all for different network types. Then we will introduce the uh, designated router and backup designated router. On a multiple access network, actually one router is connected to multiple routers. In that case, if each OSPF router establish OSPF adjacency with all the other routers, then for example, in this Ethernet network, every router will uh, establish adjacency with all the other routers. In that case, that will increase the load on the devices and the number of OSPF packets flooded on the network. There will be a lot of uh, link state advertisement uh, transmitted all over the world. However, this is not what we want. So actually, we want to uh, think of a solution for this problem. We want to reduce the LSA flooding on the network because that may waste bandwidth and waste the device resource. Then how to solve this problem? Actually, people think of the idea of DR and BDR. DR means the designated router, and BDR means the backup designated router, which means that for a multiple access network, we only select one designated router and one router as the backup. Only the designated router will set up the adjacencies with all other routers. And to, to be the backup, the BDR also set up the adjacency with all the other routers, but the other routers will not 
set up adjacencies in between. So in that case, we can reduce a lot of adjacency relationship so that the, um, the advertisement can be reduced uh, dramatically. And this backup uh, DR can monitor the status of the uh, designated router. If this one is down or fails, it can take off the role of the designated router. You may ask, uh, how should we decide which router is the DR and which router is the backup DR? Actually, the election rule is as follows. If the routers have different priority, the router with the higher OSPF priority will will be elected as the DR. If all the DR, uh, all the router are the same priority, then the router which have the higher router ID will be elected as the designated router. And both designated router and backup designated router are non-preemption. Now we introduce another technique which can also reduce the flooding message and improve the efficiency of OSPF. That is the area concept. So first, let's define what is domain. In an OSPF protocol, the OSPF domain means that there is a network which consists a lot of contiguous routers or devices, and they run the same policy. So in this network, in this OSPF domain, they can run the OSPF protocol and finally achieve a routing result. But think of that scenario. If this domain is very large, it contains a lot of routers and devices, then there will be a problem because the um, link state advertisement should be updated, synchronized within all the domain. Then there will be a lot of LA uh, uh, link state advertisement flooding. This is not what we want. To solve this problem, people think of the idea of area. So they can divide one large domain into several small areas, and in which uh, in each area the routers synchronize with each other. But between different areas, the routers doesn't need to do the synchronization. So in that case, uh, <clears throat> we can improve the performance of OSPF, of the problems caused by the single area in, in OF, OSTF domain. Because uh, for one thing, if the domain is very large, then there are so many a number of LA advertisement and the routing table becomes very large. Secondly, um, for a router, it is very difficult to calculate based on a large LSDB and a large network topology. And finally, if the network topology change or the network condition change, the LSA flooding and uh, shortest path first recalculation on the entire network brings very heavy loads. Actually, the air multi-area can solve this problem. So the idea is that we cut all the domain into several areas. And for example, in this network, we cut them into area 0, 1, 2. And this kind of multi-area design actually reduced the flooding scope of LSA. So previously, the LSA will flood all over the, the network. Now, they only be flooded within each area. And the routes are also calculated within each area. So it's the network is smaller and the calculation is much easier. Then the multi-area actually improves the network scalability because they can support very large network size and they can facilitate the network construction in very large scale networks. And the idea for that is we can set this area to be the backbone area and all the other areas connected with the backbone area. To prevent from loop problems, we, we, don't, we, we don't allow areas, non 
backbone areas to connect with each other. So there will be no loop happen. Okay, and within such a, a multi-area OSPF, we can define the routers to different types. For example, if the router are in the backbone area, then we call the router to be backbone router. Uh, if the router is within a non-backbone area, then we call it the internal router. And if one router is cross two area, then we call it the area border router because they connect two areas. And for a router which directly connected to another autonomous system, autonomous domain, then we call this kind of router to be the AS boundary route because they are at the boundary of this area and connected to another AS. Okay. And the routers within one AS will run a same protocol and another AS may run another routing protocol. They cannot communicate with each other. So there are typical OSPF single area and multi-area networking. So if this is a small network, actually a single area is enough. For example, if it's a small sized enterprise network or home network, then we can just use one area to connect them together. That's okay. But if it's a large enterprise network, then we need to construct multiple areas. For example, zero, one, two, and these two are all connected to the area zero. 